Aircraft carriers, contrary to the pessimistic predictions of military experts, have not completely lost their relevance given the conditions of modern warfare. They open up a large window of opportunity for their operators, allowing them to transfer significant forces to different points of potential conflict. In today's movie, you'll find out the latest news regarding the most expensive and modern aircraft carrier yet, the USS Ford. After flipping through the pages of history, many would be surprised to find out that aircraft carriers didn't play a large role during World War I. Although by World War II, it was these giants that became the key component in various air battles. For example, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor in 1941 from their aircraft carriers. Today, supercarriers are an essential part of virtually all major U.S. military operations. And while the ship itself is often not very useful as a weapon, per se, the air power it carries is critical to winning the battle. One of the main obstacles to the use of aviation in today's world is the delivery of aircraft to their destinations. Thus, in order to form and maintain its airbase in a foreign region, the United States needs to go through what is occasionally a very long stage of discussions with the host country, concluding special agreements, as well as observing the laws of this particular country, although they can change dramatically over time. Perhaps needless to say, in some parts of the world it's next to impossible to achieve a solution that would be beneficial to both parties. On the other hand, in accordance with international laws regarding freedom of navigation, aircraft carriers and other warships are recognized as sovereign territories throughout almost the entire ocean. As long as the ship doesn't come too close to the coast of any given country, the crew can live freely under the same rules as those that exist in their native country. In other words, an aircraft carrier gives the U.S. Navy the ability to move part of its air force around the globe as if it were a small separate American state. The aircraft can, in turn, quickly carry out combat missions near enemy territory and then return to the relatively safe air wing base. Additionally, the fleet can regularly replenish the supplies needed by the air wing, having an air group capable of maintaining its positions for an indefinite period of time. The U.S. Navy is one of the few military structures in the world that doesn't need to try to impress anyone specific, be it either their ally or adversary. It's enough to simply display the USS Gerald R. Ford, towering 250 feet above sea level, whose deck spans 1,106 feet, surpassing even one of New York's most famous symbols, the 77-story Chrysler Building. The Gerald R. Ford class consists of four supercarriers. CVN-78 Gerald R. Ford CVN-79 John F. Kennedy CVN-80 Enterprise CVN-81 Doris Miller Of all of them, only the lead ship, CVN-78, while the rest are scheduled to enter service every four years, starting with CVN-79 in 2024. The Ford-class aircraft carrier design is the direct successor to the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. Although utilizing the basic structure of Nimitz didn't stop the engineers from stuffing their new creation with tens of thousands of technological innovations, thanks to which this vessel became the most powerful vessel in existence to this day. To understand why the Ford is unique, let's take a look at the main innovations it has. We'll start, of course, with the heart of the ship, two U.S. Navy Designs A-1B nuclear reactors that provide the ship with electricity and propulsion power. The A-1B is the first naval reactor manufactured by Bechtel Corporation, having provided design and construction services for over 80% of land-based nuclear power plants in the United States. When developing the reactor for Ford, the planners came to the conclusion that the old A-4W models installed on the Nimitz aircraft carriers didn't have enough power for the latest ships. This is how the A-1B was born, having a thermal output of about 700 megawatts, which in total provides the vessel 25% more energy than the A-4W would. Additionally, increased power generation capacity will eliminate the service steam on the ship, reducing the need for personnel. The Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS, in turn, will free the ship's air wing from any steam limitations generated by the reactors compared to the previously used steam catapults of the Nimitz-class ships. Oh, by the way, about that, EMALS is a catapult based on a completely different principle which cannot be compared to its steam ancestors. It uses a linear induction motor instead of a steam piston, making the planes accelerate more smoothly and greatly reducing the load on their airframe. Not to mention the fact that with a lower system weight, it makes it possible to launch heavier aircraft from an aircraft carrier and reduces the ship's need for fresh water as well as energy-intensive desalination. 
It's funny that at one time, due to the many reasons that appeared when testing emails, Donald Trump had even demanded that they turn back the damn steam. It's a good thing those engineers had their own opinion on this matter and didn't lose. In addition to emails, electromagnets were also properly used in the new aircraft braking system, the Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG. From the cockpit, one can't immediately notice any significant changes. However, the AAG does, in fact, bring a number of changes. For example, the current hydraulic system is not able to capture UAVs without partial damage due to the extreme load on the airframe since the vast majority of UAVs simply don't have the necessary mass to actuate a large hydraulic piston which is accustomed to catching much more massive vehicles. The use of electromagnets controls the energy absorption of the turboelectric engine, thereby reducing the impact on the airframe, becoming more flexible, safer, and more reliable with a minimum of maintenance. Another innovation was a new generation dual band radar or DBR from Raytheon. It combined into a single system the ANSPY 3X band multifunctional radar and the ANSPY 4S band volumetric search radar originally developed for the ambitious US Zumwalt class destroyers. Advanced weapon elevators or AWE have become perhaps the biggest headache for military command personnel. These weapon elevators were designed to allow rapid transport of ammunition on a ship from storage and assembly to the aircraft. Thanks to the well-placed elevators, the munitions don't have to cross any air wing traffic areas, thereby minimizing potential problems with traffic in the hangars and on the flight deck, making rearmament possible in minutes, not hours. The system initially seemed, to put it mildly, not that optimal, requiring thousands of hours of work from hundreds of specialists. However, today all AWEs are functioning successfully and are ready to move ammo as quickly as possible. As for the payload that Ford can withstand, it's up to 75 aircraft. Among them, FA-118E F Super Hornet fighters, the latest F-35, EA-18G Growler electronic warfare aircraft, MH-60C Hawk helicopters, E-2D Hawkeye early warning aircraft, and two MV-22B Osprey cargo aircraft, along with various UAVs. In an attempt to equip the ship with everything necessary, the engineers also kept in mind the health of personnel on board despite their reduced number. Thus, Gerald R. Ford became the first ship in its class to have a large laboratory, pharmacy, operating room, three-bed intensive care unit, two-bed emergency department, and a 41-bed hospital ward. These will be run by 11 medical officers and 30 orderlies. Among the possible future improvements, the aircraft carrier may be looking at the installation of laser weapons and other types of directed energy guns on free electrons, electric armor, and more advanced tracking systems. At the very least, all this awesomeness is available because nowadays the ship only uses half of its power to generate the electricity to power systems, having reserve power than its predecessor, the Nimitz class, never even dreamed of. After going through a lot of budgetary and technical tests, Ford managed to stay on track. In many ways, this became possible thanks to the search for optimal ways to introduce the crew to the new technologies of the vessel. While on the ocean, Ford became the Navy's platform on the East Coast, where more than 400 pilots could earn or keep their flying certificates. At the same time, the sailors had mastered the ship's systems, giving various recommendations for additions or improvement. In the spring of 2021, Ford completed an 18-month trial, one of the most important stages of which was the qualification tests of combat systems. During these, the aircraft carrier was confronted head-on with UAVs imitating missiles, as well as high-speed maneuvering surface targets. By the summer of that year, it had been subjected to one of the most severe tests in the life of any aircraft carrier. The military conducted a full shock load test of the ship, determining how durable the Ford and its onboard systems are. To do this, they detonated 40,000 pounds of explosives near the aircraft carrier, set just 100 miles off the coast of Florida. The ship itself took the hit well, but the U.S. Geological Survey sounded the alarm after the explosion, recording an earthquake with a force of 3.9 on the Richter scale. Ford recently completed the Sea Soar Combat Readiness Exercise, marking a defining moment in the ship's readiness, with its first combat deployment expected later this year. As the largest and most expensive warship ever built, the CVN-78 will be a worthy projection of U.S. military might around the world for decades to come. Looking at the steadfastness with which it overcame all the growing pains and managed to finish what it started, there is hardly an enemy in the world who could challenge the dominance of this master of the seas and oceans. 
What do you think? Is there anyone crazy enough to challenge this beast? Tell us in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.